read me romance read read me romance read me romance read read me romance you could take a look in a book that's fine or you could sit back relax and unwind and read me romance read read me romance Welcome back to another week of Read Me Romance. Hey, lady listeners. Welcome, welcome. It's Leah. I'm Leah, half of Lex Riley, and this is... Mel. <laughs> I didn't know how to do that. The intro is so awkward. One day we'll get it. One day we'll nail it. We do have it. a full audiobook this week. <clears throat> yes. Extra we're Extra dirty. Oh my gosh. And you've got such good things that we've got Olivia Turner this week. And when we were talking earlier today, you were like, I'm so excited. I read so much of her, right? Yeah, I didn't realize. I kind of knew she was coming up, but I mm -hmm. didn't realize it was like today we were recording and I read her like all weekend. So. This is a this is a brand new book she wrote just for the podcast and the title took me out. It's called I Look Good on You. <laughs> and I was just like, what? This she did the damn thing with it. I love it. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited, you know, to to listen to this one. It, it just sounds really fun. I read the blurb and I'll read it a little later. Um before we get ready to record or <laughs> before we get ready to play it. Oh my God. So I want to ask, um, you had to go into the big city today. What'd you get for dinner? I went to the cheesecake factory. <laughs> Wait, did you get, did you get the egg rolls? Yes. Oh, the egg rolls. And I actually think that I forget that I don't eat a lot of fried food. Mm -hmm. So I've gotten it and I just like scarfed them down and now I'm like paying for it. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> But it was good. Yeah, I didn't just go into the city. I had to go through key my city and then go into Kansas City. It was like an hour, an hour away. Oh my God, an hour's worth of driving. You know, some people do that every day. I know. <laughs> like, what is this bullshit? So for us, like an hour is, I think it told me it was like 50 miles away. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. I believe it that. It only takes me an hour to get there. Mm -hmm. I believe it. Well, you know, the one time I came out, well, I take that back. The first time I came out there, I went and visited Manhattan, Kansas, which is super close to you. Um, and my husband had a job offer there. And so we flew out. My oldest one was only nine months old and my parents were on a cruise. I had to leave my baby, my new baby with my sister. Oh, shit. I know, right? <laughs> which is like enough in itself. Yeah. But then we had to fly halfway across the country because I wasn't going to go. And my husband's like, I'm not going to take a job on this a town you've never been to. That's but true. I noticed the same thing you, you're saying. It's so flat and it's like rolling hills. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful part of the country if you've never been. I just noticed it, especially when I like, I think when you live in the city, everything is going to be right there. But mm -hmm. it's really not actually. See, it yeah. takes me 15 minutes to get to the little city that's closer and everything mm -hmm. is there. But yeah. In New Jersey, it's like 15, 20 minutes to get anywhere. And it's like two miles away. Yeah. Yeah. You're totally right. Yeah. And I'm like, what the hell? Everything's supposed to be like right here. Mm -hmm. I remember. <laughs> and, and, um, like, it takes forever to get there. Well, you know, and like you say, if all the stuff is in this major area, you have to travel to it. Like you don't really have a choice that's been designed that way. Mm -hmm. But I remember Claire Contreras moved to Charlotte, which is like an hour from me. And she was telling me when we when she moved here, we met up and we went to the Renaissance Festival mm -hmm. and uh, we were talking about it. And she said, you know, we had to move out of Miami. The traffic was just so awful. She was like, it would take you hours to go anywhere, like short trips and stuff. She's like, it was just horrendous. The traffic was. And I was like, Miami? I can't. I'm like, I was on the highway for part of it. People were going like 55. I'm like, what is wrong with you? Yeah, <laughs> Do you ever get road rage? No. <laughs> I can't imagine you doing it, but I thought I'd ask just in case. <laughs> But um, I got my second vaccine today. I'm really excited. They gave out buttons. Like, like I, yeah, like actual buttons you wear. And they're like, you remember, our, so Mel and I have, um, Mel designed the, well, Eagle came up with the idea. Mel putting them on a square button. They're square buttons. And they're like little one inch ones. They're so cute. But the button that you guys came up with, it says my other button's a clitoris. That's and awesome. it's still like my favorite button ever mm -hmm. and i was looking at how cute these little i'm vaccinated buttons are and i was like we need to put the my other buttons of clitoris on this this is adorable <laughs> and somebody would have to be really close to read it because it's like it's super tiny are you so, tired at all no? you know i got when i got the kids i was in the car and i was like gosh i could go to sleep right now but that's I feel like that's my everyday three o'clock <laughs> like oh yeah. i could take a nap like i could just lay down you know 
you and I have text a lot before where we'll say like, oh shit, accidental nap. Sorry. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like, because it's like, you'll lay down for one second and then you're like out like for 15 minutes, you know? Yeah. And so I, and I, I stayed up really late last night, like packing and stuff like that. Cause we're leaving Wednesday. And, um, you know, we're recording this before the vacation. I know we talked about it on like two weeks ago, but I still haven't left yet. But, um, yeah, so I, I wondered if maybe that was it or it could be the vaccine. I mean, um, I feel like kind of like I took a muscle relaxer, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know, like my body it's feels, heavy. yeah, really heavy, loose, like, like I could go to bed, but mm -hmm. I can always go to bed at 915 <laughs> <laughs> because I'm an old lady. So but it seems like everybody's getting out and about today. You know, yep. It seems like there's all kinds of people. Even when I went. I went into the, the nail salon. It's a Monday afternoon. It's like mm -hmm. slammed. I'm like, damn. I'm like, everybody's like there? getting their oak. My dad. <laughs> <laughs> I died. I, I died. died too. I like, <laughs> I pop in. I'm like, oh, they look busy. I'm going to go see if I can get an appointment. I like walked in. My dad's like, what's up? <laughs> well, he's getting a pedicure. And he's getting a pedicure. His nails done. It's a pedicure. He's the <laughs> sweetest. I love him so. He's so sweet. <laughs> he's like, I can't cut these nails. He says, he says that the dog barks at him when he does it. What? <laughs> oh, my God. Is this the neurotic, like, uh, Australian Shepherd, the one that's, like, kind of crazy? It's kind of crazy, yeah. And mm -hmm. so I guess he doesn't like the click, click, click sound. Oh, my God. That's too he's funny. He's like, he's barking at me, and I just can't do it. Okay, <laughs> I had to heat up some apple cider because it was like 36 degrees here this morning. It's hot. I'm hot. I was like, what is happening? Why, why is this here? I have flowers blooming in my yard. Like, go the fuck away. I was it's not like prepared. It's like here and I feel like I'm, I'm in a, a t-shirt. Usually I'm in a oh, sweater. Oh, what's that t-shirt? That's super cute. What is that? It's just a cat. I'm in a, a cat. I'm in a kitten box. So they send me a swag box once a month. And there's cute. always a shirt. So I love like that. A okay, that's the cutest shirt but I ever. Up. So when I ordered, and I tried to cancel it, but they don't have any more boxes. When I ordered it, it was like, what size box do you want? And I got yeah. an XL. <laughs> I don't know what shirt. Yeah. I thought like I was getting the bigger kitten box. But no, they meant shirt. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm just. You're I'm swimming tired. in it. You're yeah. swimming. It's so cute, though. It's a little heart balloon that's floating a cat in the air. And he looks mm -hmm. miserable. <laughs> it's perfect. Um, so I have a couple of things I want to gonna do today. So we have, um, I, I posted in Read Me Romance headquarters to, um, we're going to have an Ask Me Anything section. So I have all the questions that everybody asked from Facebook and then we have emails and stuff, but I have a couple other things. So we'll probably do some of the questions today and then some of the questions on the next episode. But, um, I sent you a, a picture the other day where I deleted all my friends from Facebook mm -hmm. and I am having massive withdrawals. Really? Like I want to request everybody's back. It really? Was like, how, how many did you can't take off there? Like a, I only had 147. Mm -hmm. So I don't have a ton to begin with. I mean, I, I really tried to, I mean, through the election, I, you know, blocked people and stuff. But, you know, since then, like, I really tried to keep it to just my family or people that I know personally that I have been in front of them. We've had a conversation because I post pictures of my kids because mm -hmm. my family that lives far away wants to see them. Yeah. So, but I have, an, like, I realized, like, I have an addiction to social media. It's so bad. To where, like, I would just scroll, like, I got to just have no self control. So, call it an addiction, call it whatever you want. I have no self control. So, like, I would go on in the mornings and be like, okay, I need to make a post for Read Me Romance. I need to post this new thing for Alexa. I need to add this to the stories and make sure to share this book. Mm -hmm. And then three hours later, I'm like, oh, fuck, I got to write, you know? <sighs> <laughs> like that's that's how it would happen. Like I would just get sucked in watching mm -hmm. stories, scrolling, and like you know, last week I realized it was two in the morning and I was just scrolling Facebook, and I was like, "Why am I not going to bed? What the fuck is wrong with me?" Better than me at two in the morning scrolling Pizza Hut's menu. Yeah, I'm proud of that though. <laughs> <laughs> Did they have something new you were looking for? No, I was just bored thinking about dinner the next day. <laughs> But, you know, like, I, and I feel, like, really guilty when people send me friend requests and I don't say yes. I feel so much guilt with that. Well, oh, I kind yeah. of. Do you ever I feel would, this way? 
I actually, yeah, I usually accept most generally. Like if I recognize your face from like mm -hmm. the reader group and we've kind of chit chatted on there, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there are a few readers that um, I message with when we mm -hmm. watch some of the shows because we talk oh, about it in Messenger. Mm -hmm. You get a lot of Pokemon uh, friends in there too. <laughs> yeah, I do have a Pokemon group in there, but um, so but I get annoyed with like I'll forget about somebody, like somebody that I used to be friends with, or we mm -hmm. used to be really close, and I don't want to not be friends with them because I like to catch up, yeah. and they never show up in my feed, even though mm -hmm. they're on my friend list. So yeah. I'm like, if I maybe squashed down my list, maybe more stuff would pop. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. That's what gets frustrating to me. Yeah. Yeah. The lack of visibility. And I showed my husband yesterday. I was like, look at this. And I follow four people on, on Facebook now because I can't. And, and to people are like, why don't you just delete your account? Delete the app, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I can't because if I delete it, where does Read Me Romance go? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like, oh, bye. Yeah. <laughs> so like it's connected to that stuff. So I follow Alexa Riley and I follow, you know, well, I'm friends with my husband, <laughs> Alexa Riley, because I'm gonna keep my eyes on his ass. And then I'm friends with you and with our editor Eagle, because I was like, I message her on messenger sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, fuck, I don't want to lose that. So, but my only solution to like regulate myself was to delete everybody because I just, I have no self-control. Like I make lists and notes and I'm like, I'm just going to go on and do a post. And then all of a sudden I'm scrolling headquarters. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I showed my husband my Facebook feed and I was like, look at this. It's just ad, 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 ad. That's the whole fucking thing because I don't have, my friends aren't posting anything. I you hardly know? post. Oh my I God. I forget about it. Yeah. But it just like, I feel really left out. I feel like I'm having huge FOMO. Because my even my husband was like, oh, your mom posted that really pretty bird today. And I was like, I'm not friends with her anymore. <laughs> he was like, oh, that's right. <laughs> You're not friends with your own mom? I, I had to go cold turkey. I'll search my mom's Facebook for an hour. I'll just go back and look at old pictures. I have no no discipline. I did. I told it. I, I sent a, a message to my family. I was like, y'all, I need help. Like, I got to stay off this. Don't tell me what you're posting. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, like, I'm too weak. Or are you just giving yourself a break? No, just a break. I mean, there's there's some people that I followed because I felt really guilty about not following, like my friends' husbands or stuff like that. People that I don't engage with that I've seen one time, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, like a lot of it is just like, you know what? Let me go clean slate because there's not an option on Facebook to not accept friend requests. You can put that on every other social media platform that you can't follow or. Or, you know, make your account private or whatever. You can make it private on Facebook. But the only way you can, you have two options when you have what someone can request a friend. And it's like everyone can request your friendship or only friends of friends. That's it. Okay. So if someone's friends with my husband, I mean, we had almost 99% of our friends were the same. Yeah. So anybody can still request my friendship right now. And, and I feel horrible. Like, I feel so bad about it because they're probably like, she's such a bitch. Like, you know, like, yeah. you know, like, oh, she thinks she's like so good. Like she's, you know, she's shutting down her Facebook. Like, don't make, you know, don't let the door hit you on the way out or whatever. Like, like no, really, it's me. <laughs> no, no, I'm like, no, I literally have like a, a problem. <laughs> And so, like, I mean, I looked at the time spent on my phone, on apps, and I was like, that's embarrassing. So, we'll not look at that again. <laughs> that's why I can't do TikTok. I can't do TikTok. And I'm exactly that way on TikTok. Yeah. I, I knew right away that when I was like, oh, my God, this is, it was like somebody shot heroin in my veins. I was like, mm -hmm. I'm not, no, I'll stick to, like, mushrooms and so we're on Facebook. <laughs> like, I'm not ready for the hard stuff. <laughs> yeah, that was so much. I was like, you it know? was. It was literally like walking into a casino for the first time. I was just like, <laughs> oh, my God, I can't be in here. It was because you never know what time it is. Mm -hmm. Every other app shows you the time up top. TikTok yep. is not. No, they know what they're, they're doing. Like you know. They know exactly what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, LB uh, messaged me the other day. She was like, oh, my gosh, we should go to Vegas for your 40th. And I was like. I don't know if that's a good idea. Like, I haven't been to Vegas in so long. Mm -hmm. I was like, I don't, Mel, you know how I am at those craps tables. You love them. I can't quit them. I can't, I'll be there all night. And that's okay if that's the plan. Not, I just, yeah. yeah, I just want you to understand if you take me to Vegas, I'm going to be down in the casino at 3 a.m. rolling dice. Mm -hmm. 
my fucking I miss, miss that. Crabs. Oh. I know, right? Like even saying it right now, I'm like, God, I miss crabs. <laughs> There's like, it's such a high. Like standing mm-hmm. at that table with everybody is such a high. This is why people are addicted to gambling. Mm. Oh my God. <laughs> so yeah. So in order to like, you know, kind of, I don't know, you know, push myself out of that safety, you know, or not even safety. I don't know what the fuck I'm trying to say. Like to push myself out of that, I had to delete everyone. And I feel like such an asshole and I keep checking it and there's no one there. Like that's how <laughs> addicting it is. I'm really active in the headquarters group now. <laughs> Cause I see everything in there now. I see all the posts in there. Oh my God. Did you see somebody posted in headquarters? And I don't think we can share it on YouTube because it's definitely like it's probably okay for a private group, but I wouldn't share it on YouTube. But it's the the um, the My Little Pony fuck doll, Mm-mm. girl. It is a stuffed animal. It's a it's it's Twilight Sparkle. It's the purple one, and somebody has sewn into it like a vagina with like pussy lips and everything. And somebody's sewn tits on it. <laughs> and the person that posted, I can't even remember your name, honey. I'm so sorry. And she said, um, she was like, oh, my God, be disturbed with me. And I was like, if by disturbed, you mean turned on? <laughs> because this is like that whole doll thing all over I again. I that in my yes. head. I was like, remember the doll thing? Oh, my God, Mel. <laughs> it was like, I saw it and I was like, I'm uncomfortable in my seat. <laughs> like, I was like, why is this turning me on? This is so oh, inappropriate. Oh my God. I don't know. It was for sale. That was, it was a Facebook ad. Oh, not an ad, but like somebody was selling it themselves. How much was it? $75. Oh. It's like, that's a bargain basement price right, right there. And I was like, I Twilight Sparkle. Like 150 Fuck yes. I was like, Twilight Sparkle's a bad bitch. I don't care what any of y'all say. <laughs> but, but I saw that and I was just like, hmm, I'm going to need some alone time this afternoon. <laughs> I need to think this through. What kind of man is using this? I don't know. Young? You think, like, maybe, like... Aren't there people that, um, like, have stuffy fetishes? Yes. Well, and, yeah, and they have... Um, somebody said the bronies, the guys that, like, My Little Pony, they call themselves the bronies, and it's, mm-hmm. like, uh, they're super That's into it. That's where it came from. Oh, my God. They um, There's a, a thing on Netflix, and it's called The Toys That Made Us, and they talk about My Little Pony because it was such a huge success, and they interview some of the bronies in that, but someone even, like, tagged a video, and they were like, this is the whole documentary about the bronies and, like, what they do, and I was like, if there is a way to fuck something on this planet, someone's done it, and they've probably discussed it, and there's probably a group of people that enjoy it, and I'm not shaming anyone at all because this is something that, like, it – it definitely piqued my curiosity. Like I was in this to ask questions to want to know more. Like, how do you clean it? That was a lot of people asked that. How do you clean it? I didn't even think of that one. It was like such a pretty pussy too. Like I was almost jealous. It was so like, much. Oh my God. It was, so, it was so nice. I was like, this is really professionally done too. There's a seamstress behind this. <laughs> Some dude didn't just whip this out. So. I don't know. Um, we watched uh, the movie. Um, it's called Bad Trip. Have you seen it? Advertised on Netflix. It's got the comedian Eric Andre, but it's also got Tiffany Haddish. And it's just like Jackass. So if you like oh. the Jackass movies, it's yeah. so good. You didn't like them? No. It's like, so this guy, he, it's not like, they're not doing like contests. It's, it's, I guess I shouldn't say it's just like Jackass, but it's like pranks. So okay. this guy, he's acting, Eric Andre is a comedian, and he's acting that he stole Tiffany Haddish's car. It's his best friend's uh, sister. So she went to prison, and they went and stole her car. And so the whole movie is about her trying to hunt them down and get her car back. And it's hot pink, and it says bad bitch on the back of it. And so everywhere they go in all these different stops and cities, something crazy happens. Like one time they go, Tiffany Haddish goes into this restaurant and there's a whole bunch of people at the bar, like eating food and stuff. And she like starts slamming down like wanted posters. And it's legit. She's doing this. She's like, y'all seen these guys? Y'all seen them? Take a good look. You know who that is? He stole my motherfucking car. She's like, I'm (laughs) supposed to be in jail right now. I'm going to get them. And all these people are like, Oh my God. Oh my God. And there's this one like little old lady. And she's like, like Tiffany Haddish walks off. And she was like, She's like, she's dangerous. She's the one. I used to be in police enforcement. I got eyes on her. (laughs) And it's so funny because at the end of it, they show the bloopers where Tiffany comes back in Mm -hmm. and she's like joking with the woman. She's like, you got me. Like it's, it's actually really funny. Yeah. I really, really enjoyed it. So if you haven't seen it, 
You absolutely should. And Tiffany Haddish just, I mean, she's incredible. She won her um, her Grammy recently for um, comedy album, which was really awesome too. So I was super happy to see her in this, like, you know, kind of right afterwards. So. Um, when I think okay. of jackass, I think of like getting kicked in the balls. Yeah, I guess I shouldn't have said that. It's not like it didn't make me cringe or like it wasn't gross. Like, like there were they, hookers. Ashton yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, it would right. be more like punk. punk. Yeah, punk. absolutely. Yeah, a hundred percent. It'd be more like punk, where it's more like situational humor that makes people laugh. Like he's um, Eric Andre is vacuuming out a car, and he's like, "Oh, something stuck," and he like somehow gets it he's got on like a coveralls like a work uniform and it sucks it up in the vacuum and he's like butt naked and this guy's just standing there like oh. <laughs> he doesn't know what the fuck to do because this dude's standing in front of him completely naked and this is all in the beginning so it's not a spoiler but um because <laughs> i know i got fussed ever saying spoiler i'm sorry but um so yeah so get, definitely go check out it's, it was hella fun we hooted last night i mean at one point i was like we should we're gonna look at the kids like we were just <laughs> screaming it was so funny so um i did want to mention um uh, a book that i pulled up uh i got an email she's a lady listener her name is julie capulet which i love um i guess it's like um oh wait no that's the wrong one. her name sounds very romantic mm -hmm. sorry that's that's the wrong one i forgot to scroll down let me let me break a note <laughs> 21 30 Eight. Okay. Um, so she's a lady listener and she messaged us. Her name's JC Wolf, and the book is called Colby. And it's book one in the Outdoor Alpha series. And I read the bio for it, and it is so cute. It's only like 50 pages. It's 99 cents in KU. Um, it's a sometimes family is more than blood. We were fostered kids just trying to survive, even boys on the run who became friends or became brothers. Through everything, we stuck together with me as the unofficial leader and thought nothing could ever change that. But what happens when it's time to grow up and move on? When you find that one woman that could change everything, that could become your everything, will she make me choose between a life without her or a life without them? Family is supposed to be forever, but will one decision tear us apart? Maya. Required office team building retreat in the woods. Everyone's favorite thing, right? Add in a handsy boss obsessed with staking his claim on me. A friend set on running interference and no way out. And you have the recipe for the week of my nightmares. Then the hot, then the hot mountain man of my dreams and owner of the resort steps in to save the day. He steals me away and shows me everything I've been missing. But how long can it last? I'm here for a week. I can't leave my whole life behind for a guy I've only known for one week. Or can I? For a bear shifter or what kind of shifter? <laughs> I don't think he's yeah. a shifter. I don't no. think he's a shifter. I think it was. Well, oh. <laughs> I, I don't know. I thought it was. Well, her name's JC Wolf. So yeah, I was I like, oh, this is a this is a shifter series. But no, I don't think it is. There's a human on the cover, so it didn't say anything about it. But it's book one oh, in the outdoor alpha, alpha series. series. Alpha yeah, series. yeah. Okay. Maybe it is. I don't know. Maybe it's a hidden shifter. Someone read it and find out for me because it sounded so it. Cute. I like those short 50 page books. Yep, like I know. I read it and I was like, I read it and I was like, this is totally Mel. This is right up your alley. And she was so sweet when she emailed because I messaged back and I was like, hey, JC, thanks for reaching out. You know, we'd love to help you, blah, blah. And then she wrote back and she was like, excuse me, well, I'm a fangirl. <laughs> like, it was <laughs> so sweet. So, so yeah, go definitely go check that one out. And then, um, well, let's do some lady listener questions. You want to? I had one that I thought was really fun and I wanted to start with it um, just because I, I think it, it was really interesting. So I, I messaged you earlier and I said, what time of day were you born and what city were you born in because of this email? It says, hi, lady podcasters. This is my first writing in. So I'm going to woman up and think of something to write about. My question is, what are y'all zodiac signs? I'm a Capricorn. Uh, it would be super cool if you would read this on the podcast, but you don't have to. But if you do, you can say my name. Lady listener, Devon. Oh, that's sexy. <laughs> so I looked it up and you're a Leo, but I knew that already, mm -hmm. right? Like you're a Leo. I'm a Gemini. But um, some someone asked me one time, what's your rising sign? And I guess that's determined what part of the country you're in when you're born and the time of day you're born because it would depend on what stars are in the sky like even during the day so 
So I looked it up and Mel, just so you know this, I, th I thought it was really interesting. It tells me what it is. It's just your zodiac sign is Leo or and you're a Leo ascendant, which I think is a Leo rising. And it says, whoever has this ascendant in Leo likes to be the center of attention. And I was, like, <laughs> I was like, okay, this might be wrong. But then I kept reading. It said, they love admiration and praise of others. Recognition gives them a boost in motivation. Yeah. And I would say like, you are good with praise. Like, I mean, yeah. who isn't? Like, who doesn't want to be told they did a good job, you know? So I thought like, okay, like I could see that part. Like definitely not the center of attention, but like, yeah, like I like to be praised when I do something really awesome. Yeah. And then on your zodiac sign of Leo, it says, Leos have an innate charm. They are accommodating, emotional, and courteous. Even the outer appearance or clothing, the way they wear it and move show the person is Leo. I, I don't know how you would know that, but that's what it says. <laughs> and then, wow. um, <laughs> I know, that's absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're a cat. God, it's all adding up now. This all makes sense. Um, the moon in Virgo is, so your rise, your moon or whatever is Virgo. People born under the moon sign Virgo are extremely reason oriented. They prefer to listen to their heads and not their hearts because they initially distrust their feelings. They only make decisions after thorough review. Would you, yeah. do you think that's like, that's more close to you? Yes. I like things <clears throat> to be reasonable, thought out, structured, ruled, mm -hmm. and we all live by the rules. Yeah. I absolutely adored that when I said, hey, ask your mom what time you were born. And you were like, my mom knows to the minute. <laughs> <laughs> like, that shit, it was 518 in the morning or PM? AM. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, I think that's what I put on there. But it, it astounded me. That, like, she knew exactly the moment. She didn't ask anything. I was like, what time was I born? She's like, 518. <laughs> I was like, thanks. <laughs> you know what? The, that's so you. That's some shit you would do. Where you would just pull it out of your back pocket like, okay, thanks. And then you just go back to working. <laughs> like, that's so much you. My mom is the non-nosiest person in the world. Mm -hmm. I'd be sitting over here talking to you. and be like, that bitch died. Did you hear about that? And she could hear me and wouldn't even be like, who died? Oh my God, really? No. But she's like, I know you, I love when you said um, she's the bone collector. We call her the bone collector. And I love that. She I knows, so cool. But somehow she knows everything. Uh huh. I like that. It's like she'll pull stuff up from like 20 years ago. Like, <clears throat> I want to aspire to that. <laughs> but you know that if you tell her something, <clears throat> it's not going anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I tell her stuff. I'll be like, did you such and such? And then I'm like, dad, did you, did mom tell you what I said? He's like, no. I'm like, it's not even a secret. <laughs> I don't want to tell this story twice. What the fuck? <laughs> I love it. So I looked mine up as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. I am a cancer. I'm a Gemini and I'm a cancer rising. So Gemini is, they're among air signs. They are the fastest in thinking and acting and being counted among the most tolerant in the whole zodiac. I don't know if that's right at all. You're fast thinking. Yes, you are. You're clever <laughs> off the cuff. I would say clever, yes. I would not say the most tolerant. I feel like I'm generally annoyed. No? You're pretty tolerant I mean. with your husband. <laughs> You're fucking right. <laughs> <laughs> He's worn me down. God damn it. <laughs> so um, I'm a cancer rising, and it says their high sensitivity characterizes people with cancer ascendant. What they, I don't even know how to say these words, what they perceive and experience is absorbed deep inside and processed emotionally. They feel a deep connection with nature and the environment. I don't know about that either. Maybe my mom has the time wrong. <laughs> I was like, I don't know about this mama. But she said, she came off and she was like, 7.30 a.m. She said, we left the house at 1.30 a.m. Like she knew that for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so my moon is Libra. Ups and downs are rare in the emotional life of people with the moon sign Libra. They're usually balanced and in peace with themselves. They resolve internal and external conflicts quickly to maintain their mental balance. I'd say probably yes. I, I To a fault, I think, too. I make decisions way too quickly because I just want a decision to be made. I don't like sitting in limbo. I don't want to wait. So I, I thought that was a really cool question. I, I looked it up and I was like, oh, that's really neat. I cannot remember the website. I just Googled. What's my rising sign free? Yeah, <laughs> so, like doing those things. I haven't done the things where you do the test where it takes like 45 minutes. Oh, God. 
and it tells you, but it's kind of helpful because it'll tell you mm-hmm. like the way you should try to learn what you should work on. They're like, mm-hmm. you're not very great with this. So you should keep an eye on that, but mm-hmm. you will work better if you try this. And I'm like, oh, okay. That's so true. All right. Let me tell you a little bit about, we'll ask some more questions on Thursday's episode, but since that was a little bit longer. Um, Olivia T. Turner, look at those initials, baby. I was born to write OTT over the top. That's what most people call OTT romance. I love over the top alpha males who are possessive and completely obsessed with their women. These dark, powerful men take what they want. If you like your book, Boyfriends, Sweet and Cuddly, then shut the computer off and walk away. (laughs) If you like your heroes, rough, dirty, and possessive to the extreme, come on in and have some fun. Always safe with no cheating and a guaranteed happily ever after. Sign up for my newsletter here. Um, This is on Amazon. You can go. It's a hyperlink. You can click it. Um, Sign up for a newsletter today for up-to-date news on over-the-top releases and to get a free exclusive book, Obsessed. That's the free book you get for signing up. And it's, I'll put it in the show link. So you guys oh, good idea. That. Okay, so you can just scroll down. And that's oliviatturner.com um, slash newsletter, and it'll all pull up on there. So I think this, um, this audio book mm-hmm. is going to be a great taste of what you get with her, just a little bit more fast-paced. I love it. What would be if someone was like had never read her before and wanted to go straight away and listen to the whole thing? What would you, I guess, one recommend? of the most recent that has been my favorite was mm-hmm. her one for Cherry Falls, which is two one six Rancher mm-hmm. Way. Okay, and so I think it felt like it was a little bit longer than some mm. of her other ones. Yeah, yeah, so that's it was great. More drawn out, and I just know it's probably been my favorite in the Cherry Falls so far mm-hmm. that I've read. I don't think if I've read for a few weeks, so. That's it's awesome. really good, but then she has a bunch of other ones. There's fair ones that are mm. awesome. She just had a four fair ones out. She has one, um, like it's a first, love at first sight series. There's four books. It's all for brothers. But I actually want to know if she's listening to this. I'm in the middle of the last book, the fourth one. Does the sister get a book? Oh, I don't know. Like, she better now. <laughs> well, I see, well, she's moved on to other series. So I'm like, oh, okay. the sister was going to get a book. Why didn't? Why did the brothers just get books? <laughs> Maybe so people like, just want to out this. I, I was wondering if that's coming up. Okay. Well, if you're listening, Olivia T. Turner, we're blasting you right now. Get on <laughs> it. <laughs> so we're so excited to play the first installment of "I Look Good on You," and we're going to send you into it, and we'll see you on the other side. Bye. Bye. This is "I Look Good on You" by Olivia T. Turner. Read for you by Avi Page. Chapter 1. Vance. Wait until you get a load of this. You're going to freak out. I follow my real estate agent, Todd, into the kitchen, and I'm not freaking out, but I am impressed. It's a huge, luxurious kitchen, but I'd expect that in a $10 million home. What do you think? Todd asks with a huge grin on his face. I walk around the enormous granite island, letting my palm glide over the smooth, cold rock. It's big enough to fit a few people sitting around it, and my mind instantly pictures a woman sitting there with an adoring smile as she sips her wine and watches me cook for her. Huge gas oven, Todd says, shattering my fantasy. And look at the size of this fridge. Incredible. Enough to feed an army or a couple of teenagers. Are you married? Do you have children? I grit my teeth as I look around. I'm 35 years old and I'm still single. I've been building my business for the past decade and a half and haven't had time to focus on much else. But now I'm ready. Ready to find the one. Waiting for that spark. That special jolt of lightning to strike when I'm least expecting it. I thought she'd be here by now, but she's not. Sometimes I wonder if it's ever going to happen. No... I say with a heavy sigh. I'm not married. Kids? No. Well, if that's in your future, this is going to make a great home to raise a family in. Come see the rest of the house. The owners have already moved out, so you can take possession whenever you desire. He gives me a tour of the empty house, grinning when he shows me the man cave with the full wet bar and pool table in the basement. This house has it all. A gym, a theater room, and more rooms than I can keep track of. Plenty of bedrooms, Todd says as we walk up the stairs. And wait until I show you this office. It overlooks the in-ground pool and the beautifully landscaped backyard. 
He opens the French doors with an extravagant flair, and I nod as I walk in. This will work great, although I'm not sure when I'll be back to work. After 15 years of 100-hour work weeks, I sold my tech company, and now I never have to work another day in my life. But I am a workhorse, so I know it's only a matter of time before I jump into the next business venture. The office is all custom wooden shelves along the walls that extend up to the high ceilings. The owner has left a beautiful, intricately carved desk in the middle of the room, and on the empty bookshelves rests one lonely book. I grin as I walk over to it and pick it up. Pride and prejudice. Never read it. The owners have agreed to throw in the desk, Todd says as I walk over to the giant windows that overlook the backyard. It was originally owned by Ernest Hemingway. It's quite the historical artifact and a nice addition to this beautiful home. I'm only half listening as I look at the gorgeous swimming pool in the back. It even has a swim-up bar with a giant tiki hut over it. What the? I whisper when I spot a girl lying on one of the pool chairs. My heart starts pounding when I roam my hungry eyes over her. She's stunning. I can't breathe as I stare at her in awe. Her wavy auburn hair is resting on her shoulders as she tilts her chin up to the sun like she's daring it to outshine her. It doesn't stand a chance next to this angelic beauty. The pounding in my chest makes its way into my ears, and I can't hear a word that Todd is saying. I'm completely focused on her. I'm fixated and worried that I won't ever be able to tear my eyes off her sweet body. It's on full display in a tight black bikini that has my cock stirring. Sexy little toes, long shimmering legs, hips that I can't wait to grab onto, and big juicy tits that are already mesmerizing me. I'm already obsessed. I need to know everything about her. I need to meet her, to touch her, to taste her. What do you think? Todd asks, snapping me out of my hypnotic daze. Would this office work for you? I charge past him, rushing out of the office to get to her before my heart explodes. I'm all jittery and on edge without her in my sight as I take three stairs at a time on the way down. Who is she? Does she live here? Oh, fuck. Is this the owner's wife? I'd be surprised if it is. She looks young. Nineteen. Twenty, maybe. She could be the owner's daughter. The emotions swirling through me are so overwhelming. This is not like me at all. I'm always so cool and calm. I've sat at conference tables around the world, negotiating nine-figure deals without breaking a sweat. And one look at this girl has me cracking. My hands are shaking, literally shaking. What the hell is wrong with me? I tear through the kitchen and rip open the sliding doors. She has headphones on so she doesn't see me as I rush around the pool, breathless as I hurry to her side. She's bobbing her head to the music and I can see through her sunglasses that her eyes are closed. My reflection is staring back at me, looking staggered and disheveled as my heart does flips in my chest. God, I want to touch her so badly. I have to fight the intense urge to sit down on her chair and run my palm up her smooth, soft thighs until I get to her sweet mound that's only covered by a thin strip of damp material. My mouth waters as I soak in the stunning view. A growl rumbles out of my throat when I watch a bead of sweat slide down her chest between those sweet tits. She must have heard it because she opens her eyes and gasps as she jerks up to a seated position. We stare at each other for a long, heated moment, and neither of us moves until I slowly reach out and slide her sunglasses onto the top of her head. Her blue eyes hit me right in the core, gripping me, squeezing me, killing me. She's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. I want her. I need her. She's mine. I don't care what I have to do from this moment on to get her, but I've already made up my mind. This girl is all mine. I'm the kind of guy who will fight with every breath to get what he wants, and the only thing I want is her. She's looking up at me with guilty eyes. I want to tell her there's nothing she can do to upset me, but Todd comes racing out of the house like an angry bull. What are you doing here? He shouts. You're not allowed here. Rage rips through me. My pulse races and my hands squeeze into tight fists. 
Nobody talks to my girl like that. Nobody. She starts to quickly gather her things, but I put a hand up, stopping her. Wait a second. I turn around with a snarl and charge right up to Todd. His eyes are on my girl until I grab him by the neck and slam him into the side of the house. I glare at him as his skin turns red and his eyes widen in panic. She can stay wherever she wants. You got that? His head bounces up and down. Yes, Mr. Keller. Good. Now go wait inside. I throw him toward the door and he quickly rushes in. Maybe I was a little rough with him. But anyone who dares to talk to my girl like that is going to find out how protective I am. And so is my girl. She's going to find out what a possessive bastard I can be. Chapter Two Isabella I'm staring at the man in shock as he tosses the real estate agent back into the house and turns to me with his dark eyes shining with something. I've never seen that look before. No one has ever looked at me like that, with such possession. It's so territorial, like he owns me. I'm a proud, independent woman who knows every word to each song on my Girl Power playlist, but for some reason, I like it. That look is hitting something primal in me, a deep, dark place I didn't know existed. My breaths are coming out short and quick as he runs his hand through his brown hair. He's beautiful, tall with a muscular frame and nice big arms, but it's his face that really gets me. It's the kind of face you can stare at for hours, the kind you'd never get tired of gazing at whether it's lying in bed or across a candlelight dinner or staring at you from across the pool, brimming with intensity. He looks like he came from the office, dressed in gray pants and a white dress shirt that's rolled up his thick forearms. A thin gray tie hangs loose around his neck. Stop staring at him, I tell myself, but I can't seem to pry my eyes off him. I can't look away. I'm sorry, I say as I grab my school books and toss them into my bag. I know I'm not supposed to be here. That asshole real estate agent already caught me lounging by the pool last week, and he told me to never come back after he hit on me and I rejected him. The house has been empty for two months and it's the perfect place to study. I live next door with my aunt and uncle while I'm going to college, but I don't think they really want me there. They agreed as a favor to my mom, but they don't like it when I hang around too much, so I hang out here. Don't be sorry, he says in his rich, deep voice as he walks over. I can almost feel the masculine alpha energy radiating off him as he gets close. It's making my skin tingle. What's your name? Isabella, I say with a gulp, but everyone calls me Izzy. Not me, he says as his intense eyes lock onto mine. I'm calling you Isabella. You have Bella in your name for a reason. His hungry eyes roam down my body, and I'm glad that I grabbed my skimpiest bikini. I like the way it's making his breath hitch. Do you live here? He asks. No, I live next door. I was just studying. Do you always come here to study? I can feel my cheeks starting to blush as he towers over me. Sometimes, but I won't anymore if you buy the house. Don't say that or I won't buy it. I feel a flush creeping up my neck as I try to play it cool. So you're going to buy it? It's a spectacular house. He looks back at it, and I take the opportunity to steal a glance at his big, round shoulders. He has the type of shoulders that are perfect to get thrown over as he carries you to the bedroom. I haven't decided yet, he says as his heated eyes land back on me. There are a few things I have to know first. Like what? I need to know about the neighbors. Well, I'm staying with my aunt and uncle there, and on that side is an elderly couple who don't make any noise and keep to themselves. I don't know if that's true or not, but I desperately want him to stay, and I'm not above making up some little white lies to keep him here. He crosses his big arms as his eyes narrow on me. And what about you? What about me? Do you have a boyfriend? I laugh. That's a $10 million house. Does the decision to buy it really have anything to do with me having a boyfriend? Yes. My smile fades when I see how serious he is. The rush of heat swirling around my core starts to sink to the area between my legs. What's your name? 
Vance Keller, he says, never taking his eyes off me. Now, do you have a boyfriend? I shake my head. I'm 20 years old and I've never had a boyfriend. I'm still a virgin and haven't even kissed another man before. For some reason, whenever a boy tried, it never felt right. So I always pulled my head back, made excuses, and in one case, ran away. What brings you to this neighborhood, Vance? I don't know, but I know what's going to keep me here. He glances at my bikini bottoms and I feel a deep throb down there. Is your wife inside the house? He shakes his head. Oh, thank God. Girlfriend? Nope. This gorgeous, single man might be my neighbor? Oh, Lordy, I won't get any studying done. So, did you move here for work? He shakes his head. I don't have a job. I laugh. So, how are you going to afford this place? Wait, are you only looking at the house so you can steal their cutlery or something? Because the house is empty. He laughs and it makes my heart start pounding on overdrive. I'm a tech entrepreneur. I just sold my company. Have you ever heard of Crinkle? You made Crinkle? I say with a gasp. I grab my phone and show him the app that's already installed. All of my volleyball friends use it. We chat with each other on it. You play volleyball? I nod. I got a partial scholarship. Stand up, he commands. I want to see how tall you are. My body obeys, standing up as he looks me up and down. I can feel my nipples hardening to the point of tingling as his eyes roam over my breasts. You're tall, he says as I stand in front of him. I'm almost as tall as him, but he seems to like it. You're so beautiful. Wait until you see me jogging around the neighborhood in my tight little volleyball shorts. He groans like I just grabbed his dick. I'm not normally flirty like this, but I can't help it with Vance. If he's on the fence about buying this house, Maybe the image of me in my little shorts will be enough to push him over the edge. He takes a step toward me, close enough that I can smell his intoxicating cologne. He smells like sex and money. You don't look like a tech guy, I blurt out. I always think of tech guys as skinny, nerdy types, not tall, muscular men who can melt a woman with one look. He shrugs those massive shoulders. I'm good at organizing people and getting them to do what I want. I bite my bottom lip with a grin. Do you think you'll be good at getting me to do what you want? I hope so. What do you want me to do to you? That came out wrong. He takes another step toward me and grips my waist with a firm hand, making me whimper. He's so close, close enough to kiss, close enough that another few centimeters and my breasts will be grazing his chest, close enough to make me lightheaded. I should pull away. I should move, but I can't. My eyes are locked on his. My body is frozen. Dirty thoughts have taken over my brain. His fingertips are like little shocks of lightning on my bare skin. My hand is moving on its own as it touches his hard bicep and moves up to his shoulder. This man is so sexy. He could do anything he wanted to me right now, and I don't think I would say no. I'll tell you what I want you to do, he says with a deep edge to his voice. I gulp as I wait for him to continue. Once I tear off this bikini, spread your sweet legs and dive in between them, devouring your hot little ripe pussy, I want you to come on my mouth, hard. Every nerve ending in my body is on fire as I stare into his heated eyes. The air is smoldering all around us. I can't breathe with his eyes on me like this. I can already feel his mouth down there, and it's making my pussy ache. I'm throbbing and already dripping wet. His grip on my waist tightens and he pulls my body against his. I gasp as my aching nipples press against his hard chest. I don't pull away or fight it. I melt against him as our mouths get closer. I can feel his hot breath tickling my lips, and all I can think about is feeling his tongue sliding against mine. Vance, I whisper as I hold onto his arms and tilt my chin up. That's what I want, too. He crushes his lips against mine, and I moan into his mouth as my whole body crumbles to pieces. His big arms wrap possessively around me, holding me in place so I can't get away. 
like I'd ever try. This is the most sensual and erotic moment of my life. It's perfect. I moan against his tongue when I feel his huge cock pressing against my stomach. I can't believe I'm turning this alpha of a man on like this. He's hard for me. His palm slides up my bare back and he grabs a fistful of my hair. I whimper as he tugs my head back so he can kiss me even deeper. I love how he's handling me just rough enough to let me know he's in charge. All I want to do is please him. All I want is for him to make me his. Excuse me. Shit. Todd's timid voice is ringing out from the kitchen window. Vance pulls away from my mouth with a growl, like a pissed off lion being interrupted from his dinner. I catch our reflection in the sliding doors, and I can't help but notice that we look good together. I look good on him. I'm sorry, Todd says, but I have a couple coming to see the house in five minutes. Having Todd interrupt us is like a bucket of cold water being poured on the fire. I suddenly catch myself and realize what I'm doing. I quickly rush back to my chair, grab my things, and escape through the separation in the hedges before Vance realizes what's happening. My legs are weak from all the lust pumping through my veins, but I force them forward until I'm back in my aunt and uncle's house and rushing up the stairs. I run into the guest room that I'm staying in, fall onto the bed, and stare at the ceiling as my heart pounds like never before. That was interesting. I hope he buys the house, because I want more. Chapter Three Vance My heart is breaking as I watch Isabella's delicious ass disappear into the hedges. I desperately want to chase after her, but I let my little bunny go. I turn and lock eyes on Todd as he steps outside. Oh, God, he says in a panic as I charge up to him. Are you going to hit me? I slap my hand on his shoulder instead. No, I'm going to get you paid. Cancel your appointment. I'm buying this house. He winces as he looks at me. The owners are going to want to hear more than just one offer. Make it 11 million. His jaw drops open. That's a million over asking price. Do you think they'll accept that? I ask with a grin. He nods his head up and down like a jackhammer. Yeah, that will do it. Make it happen, I say as my eyes roam back to the hedges, and I want the keys tonight. Tonight? I don't know if that's... I turn back to him with a glare, and he stops himself, nodding. I'll get it done by tonight. Good, I whisper to myself as he rushes into the house, because if I have to spend one more night without my girl's hot little pussy wrapped around my cock... I'm going to die. Todd moves faster than expected, and I get the keys at dinner time. The money is transferred, the papers are signed, and this place is all mine. I haven't even seen the garage yet, but I would have bought a rundown, leaky shack for ten million if it meant I got to live next to a goddess like Isabella. The power is cut off, and it's too late to hook it back up, but I don't really care. I grab my bag, pillow, and sleeping bag out of my trunk and head into my new mansion. The fridge is empty and there's no furniture in any of the rooms. I could have stayed at my penthouse condo for another few nights until the movers came, but I couldn't bear to be away from my girl. I know I wouldn't have slept a wink. Even driving back to my condo to get my bag was torture. I'm already out of my mind obsessed about this girl. I can't stop thinking about her. She's dominating my every thought. I place my running shoes near the front door where I can quickly put them on if I spot her jogging by. My mind is racing with all of the dirty things I want to do to her. I pace around the house for a bit until it's either drive myself insane or do a few laps in the pool to burn off some of this pent-up energy. I put my bathing suit on and dive into the huge in-ground pool, groaning as I feel the cool water run over my hot skin. Even underwater, I can't escape the thoughts of her. I can still taste the sweetness of her mouth and feel the softness of her skin. It's driving me crazy. I swim until my arms are numb, and when I get out of the pool, my cock is rock hard from thinking about her. I've been so distracted that I forgot my towel in my bag. I head into the house to get it when my heart stops. I see her through the window, jogging by my house. 
She's wearing tight red volleyball shorts and a tank top. My heart starts racing as I rush over to my shoes. I'm only in my bathing suit, but I don't have time for a shirt or socks. That girl is moving fast, and I don't want to lose her. I tie my laces as quickly as possible and dart out the door, not even bothering to lock it. Shit, I whisper when I see how far down the street she is. Why did I do so many damn laps? I run like there's a rabid bear chasing me, pumping my arms and legs until they're burning. I start to gain some ground on her, but she's a quick little bunny and remains far ahead. My eyes are locked on her ass in those tight little shorts. I want to rip them off with my teeth to get to the juicy bits underneath. Panic starts to fill me when she turns left on a street and disappears from my view. I dig down deep and run as fast as I can, turning down the street only a few seconds later. Relief floods into me when I see her auburn ponytail bouncing on her back. It's not long before I catch up. She gasps when I pop up beside her, but then she smiles. Already sweating that much, are we? She asks with an adorable grin. Your new house is not that far away. You heard, I ask as I admire her side profile. She's even more gorgeous than I remembered. I saw the sold sign as I jogged by. Congratulations. Thanks. And this is not sweat. I was in the pool. She smiles, and I swear my heart nearly gives out. Normally, people go swimming after they jog. Well, I go jogging whenever I see my sexy neighbor taking off down the street. She laughs as we jog together. I can't help but glance a few times at her big tits bouncing up and down. Even her sports bra can't hold them in place. A guy is washing his car in his driveway, and he stops when he sees us approaching. A low territorial growl leaves my throat when I see him gawking at her. He glances at me, and his eyes widen when he sees the enraged look on my face. Suddenly, he realizes he needs something in his garage, and he hurries into it, leaving the hose leaking down his driveway. It's not going to take long before everyone on the block knows that this girl is mine alone to look at. She's off limits to their wandering eyes. For the new kid on the block, I'm not being very neighborly, but I don't care. I'm not sharing this beauty. We chat as we run, and by the time we reach the park, I'm utterly in love with this smart, funny, spectacular girl. I want another kiss, I say as we take a few moments to stretch on the freshly cut grass. She grins as she grabs her ankle and stretches out her leg. My eyes roam up her bare thigh to the tight red shorts that are molded to her sexy mound. It's all I've been able to think about, I say as my heart pounds. I still can't believe I'm acting this way. I've never had a girl under my skin like this before. I'll tell you what, she says as she gets up and starts bouncing up and down on her toes, making those big tits jiggle. I'll race you to that pole over there. If you win, you can kiss me. And if you win? I ask. I can use your pool whenever I want. Done. Really? She asks with a smile. I don't answer. I just take off running. I'm not above cheating if it means tasting her sweetness again. I have a head start, but this girl is fucking fast. I'm pumping my arms, heart slamming into my ribcage, thighs on fire, and she's still passing me. I can't help but grin as she pulls up in front of me by a couple of feet. My girl whizzes past the pole and I cross it a second later. We both have our hands on our knees, breathing hard and smiling as we look at each other. I was going to let you use my pool anyway, I tell her. She grins. I was going to let you kiss me anyway. That's all the invitation I need. I charge up to her and sink my tongue into her mouth as she wraps her arms around me. I could stay like this forever, kissing hard and pulling each other close. She tastes like sweet innocence and I can't get enough of it. Her breasts are pressed into my chest, making my cock so hard that it hurts. I slide my hand down her back and grip her ripe little ass cheek until she whimpers into my mouth. You're staying with me tonight. I say on her parted lips. Okay, she whispers back. I'll come over once my aunt and uncle are in bed. Our lips meet again as I claim her mouth like I'll be claiming her sweet, juicy cunt later tonight. I wonder if she knows that once I have her, I'm not ever letting her go. If not, 
She'll find out soon enough. Welcome back. Hi. So that first installment was amazing. And we're going to get you, we're going to give you the second on Thursday. So be on the lookout for that. Um, follow us everywhere you can. Join our Facebook group, Read Me Romance Headquarters, Enter to Win, all the good stuff this week. And um, I think that's it for right now. All right. Gosh. Tell them what to do. Buck your day up. Make sure your bitch. Don't be a dick. Bye, guys. Bye. Read me romance. Read, read me romance. Read me romance. Read, read me romance. You could take a look in a book that's fine, or you could sit back, relax, and unwind and read me romance. Read, read me romance.